So the first one we have is a 3D reconstruction job. This particular one is called uh, 3D R Labs. They are based out of Kentucky. The technologist I know who is getting hired at this particular facility uh, mentioned they train people uh, for two months in Kentucky before he is released on his own to work remotely from home. They hire people generally twice a year and uh, you do have to be ARRT registered. However, you do not have to be registered in CT or MR. He said they would train you uh, for that particular role. However, if you are registered and you have done reconstructions in the past, I'm sure uh, that would definitely help you out uh, from getting a position like this. So these uh, scans are done remotely from home and then they are sent back to the facility to those attending physicians who uh, requested them. The second one is fairly new. It's called a virtual cockpit. Um, the one that I know of in my hometown, this is a smaller uh, uh, outpatient clinic who has an x-ray tech, but they do not have an MRI tech on staff. So the x-ray tech will uh, ask the questionnaire, uh, prep the patient, get them ready, get them on the table, get them all lined up. And an MRI tech, a registered MRI tech, will take over the computer and scan the patient for this facility. So. From what I hear on this website, um, this particular MRI tech who is scanning uh, somewhere else, uh, either at a facility or from their home, they can scan up to three patients at a time on their uh, control. Uh, they do get on the screen and ask uh, questions to the patient. Uh, they have access to see the injector. Uh, I do believe they have to have a uh, physician you know, on, on standby in case there is a reaction. Um, but these MRI techs work remotely and they log in and scan the patient. Never have to touch a patient, never have to have interaction with them uh, you know, physically, and they are scanning the patient from home. The third position is uh, called either a radiology efficiency specialist or I've heard it called a telerad technologist. These are techs who are acting as the middleman from small facilities sending their images um, out of their um, out of their office to a radiologist from home, um, they need to have somebody that has a knowledge of um, you know axials and sagittals and how many images they should be expecting and is the study completely ready to be read? Then you can send it and release it to the radiologist who then returns and sends the report back to you and you are in return send it back to the facility. So it's a very crucial role. It does take um, you know some type of um, pressure off of the technologist and off the physician to act as that middleman. So you, you probably do have to talk to radiologists quite often, uh, speaking to text often, making sure they can maybe resend the images or make sure you know how many images are there. Um, this demand is growing. A facility I spoke with, they are looking for 12 technologists right now to do this. And you need to do this from home. Um, there are some companies that do this uh, in an office. There are some companies I found on Indeed that um, are not hiring uh, radiology techs. However, uh, there are most of them are. So you may be asking wh what's needed for me if I'm interested in one of these three different types of careers. Uh, there are a few things you need to have um, that I see standard across all these different platforms. Number one, you need to have a knowledge of computers. Um, not just on how to use a, a computer uh, but how to navigate between uh, multiple screens, uh, primarily two different monitors going at one time, uh, remoting into facilities if needed, um, beyond the basic using the mouse and the computer and the scanner. Uh, you should have some kind of troubleshooting knowledge as far as what to do if a particular facility cannot um, access the system to send the images, uh, especially with a radiologist who may not have an IT or a tech background. Um, to help him troubleshoot any concerns that he may have. Uh, there are some things I'm sure they'll teach you in training, but you to have a knowledge of this up front uh, is key. The second thing you need to have is you need to have a, a fast computer. Uh, the internet speed of your computer will very much dictate if you're hired for this position. One of the positions I was looking into required you to have at least a 25 um, speed for uh, download and at least a 15 or a 10 speed of upload which in my mind it seems reversed because when I do my speed test I have like an 800 speed 
of upload, but only around 25 of download. I had to call my internet provider and get an upgrade. That is an additional charge per month that the uh, company you're working for will not cover. Um, but you may be able to write it off in your taxes. I'm not sure how that goes. But you do need to have a fast internet because there are multiple images coming uh, coming in, going out. They may not be coming in or going out directly in your computer, but the facility needs to be trusted to know that your internet speed is at top notch. And the last thing that a lot of companies do look for um, is some kind of customer service uh, experience. Um, obviously patient care is great, radiology is great, but if you have anything additional above and beyond that uh, is great, especially any type of uh, jobs that require you to work, uh, you know, as a secretary, uh, uh, some type of job with administration, handling multiple things at one time, being able to balance a heavy workflow and not getting uh, your tasks mixed up, um, being able to uh, speak clearly in a, uh, you know, efficiently on a telephone and uh, having the urgency and um, the knowledge and the, the, the passion to to know that this is a crucial role in the radiology field. Uh, all of these roles are. So those three things are um, going to stand you above and beyond um, somebody else maybe potentially applying for this position. So being registered in CT and MR is probably going to be very helpful as well, having experience doing 3D reconstructions. Those things they, you know, they do teach you in training. Um, however, the IT and computer skills, um, how to navigate uh, different screens and being efficient, those are things that naturally we should as RTs be picking up on as we proceed through our career. And our first remote job as a bonus is on the podcast Rad Tech Life. You can find on Spotify and on radtechcredit.com. You can find some information about Neil Huber with a Pulse Radiology. He is discussing a potential location called Alpha RT, which will be known as a VRT, a virtual radiology tech. And you can click on his Spotify link on his website and you can listen specifically at minute 44 minute and six seconds he'll start discussing a little bit more about this upcoming role the second job is becoming a travel radiology recruiter this one here posted uh, through aya healthcare is no longer needed but you can often find jobs as an rt in the travel healthcare world uh, having the experience as an RT in a hospital settings is very valuable to some of these healthcare travel companies. I do know one technologist who has switched from the uh, technologist field into uh, full-time recruiting. So it is lucrative and you can potentially work from home for some of those job postings. Be sure to join the radiology only specific group on Facebook called Radiology Technology Life. There is often jobs posted regarding remote work. There is a link to this Facebook group and all the job postings in the comment section. The other jobs you can work remote are also radiology packs. You can work with Epic if you know the Radiant software. I've heard of technologists working from home remotely with that software. And also become a radiology license and a customer service representative for companies like Envision. I've not had a chance to do any research on those. You would have to do that yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, there are some links in the description. If you have any questions or maybe if you have any other jobs you would like me to research, please post that in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and I'll be putting out more content as we go along. Thank you.